Hi guys, here we are again. Uh, we're going to start part two of phase two of the whitetail rut. Uh, we were talking about antler rubs when I let off. And uh, one of the things I wanted to mention that, that uh, when these younger bucks are chased off the range of the big dominant buck, you know, there's usually anywhere from two to five lesser bucks, but when I say lesser, they're lower on the, the pecking order of bucks in that square mile. When they get chased off range into these little secluded hideaways during the period whitetails are breeding, uh, they generally will continue making antler rubs, and some of them will make a lot of them. They'll, usually these small areas where they go are uh, in tough places to find, because they're out in swamps, and little highlands and swamps and bogs, and where it was Timbers, especially dense, uh, while in their temporary ranges off range, <laughs> uh, many bucks will continue making antler rubs and ground scrapes. And uh, I've seen some little islands out in bogs where there's maybe only one or two trails, deer trails on it. And along the trails, gee, every 10, 20 yards, there'll be an antler rub or a ground scrape or both. And uh, those bucks will often continue renewing them. Uh, all the way to the point where uh, breeding is over and you can find a lot of them. And those little out of the way places are good places to take bucks. While breeding is in progress, if you know where they are, that's part of the scouting process. But my sons and I, uh, every year, take a significant number of lesser bucks from places like that. So it's good to know where they are. I don't count on antler rubs being as productive stand sites as ground scrapes because they aren't renewed as often as ground scrapes, especially ground scrapes of the dominant breeding bucks. But they are useful for many things like identifying trails and areas where older bucks are living, you know, judging by the, site, the diameters of the trees that they make antler rubs on and other areas, like bedding areas. <laughs> During phase two of the rut, uh, the big bucks, even off-range bucks, regularly return to places where they bed. The older bucks uh, go back to their little secluded bedding areas several, well, once or twice every day between periods of activity, especially in the morning while all the other deer are feeding and, and in the evening as well. Uh, but when they go back to their bedding areas, I don't know if uh, they're restless because they're anticipating breeding or they're frustrated because bucks, certain bucks, especially yearling bucks, keep returning to their home ranges or um, peaking testosterone is making them more restless, more aggressive. But Older bucks tend to make a lot of ground or antler rubs, <laughs> no ground scrapes, a lot of antler rubs within their bedding areas. And this is one of the ways of identifying a bedding area. Uh, my rule is if you find six or more in a relatively small area, say an acre, uh, and I found as many as 30 in an acre of antler rubs, you're in a buck bedding area. Okay. But there's other signs, of course, like lots of fresh and old tracks of an older buck, and droppings, old, fresh and old droppings of an older buck, and beds, the size made by older bucks. But the one you notice the most when you're out scouting, you'll see some in the antler rub over there, and you look around, gee, there's another one over there, hey, there's another one over to the left. Uh, that might be a buck bedding area. So you go over there and check it out, and Sure enough, gee, there's another one over there, and if you find six or more in a relatively small area, uh, the odds are, the odds are very good that you're standing in a buck bedding area. That doesn't, I, nowadays my sons and I don't hunt buck bedding areas except maybe on the last day or two of a hunting season because once uh, they, they uh, lose uh, safety of their bedding area, they tend to abandon their ranges for the rest of the hunting season, so we leave those alone. Why we leave them alone, they stay in their home ranges, and our chances of taking a big buck remain equal all through the hunting season. So that's something to know. 
but um, when you find a cluster of them, six or more, in a secluded area, lots of brush, lots of trees, you know, you can't see very far, well, you probably found the bedding area. You can get over there and look for those other signs and that'll help you to finish identifying it. Meanwhile, the big dominant buck, you know, he's worried about whether any of these other bucks have, have uh, come back to their home ranges. You know, the lesser bucks have smaller home ranges than the big guy. Usually, oh, they're anywhere from 250 to uh, maybe 600 acres, almost an acre in size of a big dominant buck. And they share ranges. Their ranges overlap. Unlike ranges of does, does have separate ranges that, and they are pretty vicious about keeping other does with young out of their ranges. But anyway, uh, he's worried about them. Now he's got to get this settled so that none of them are in the way or, or giving him problems once the does begin their estrus or, or being in heat. So he cruises his ranges almost continuously, and a lot of times in, at night as well as by day, searching for other bucks that dared to return, and visiting does, especially during feeding times, because he wants to know where, they, where they're spending their time and once breeding begins, once the first one of those does finally begins emitting the pheromone that indicates they're ready to breed. So he's on the move a lot, and he'll renew his ground scrapes and a lot of his antler rubs by, you know, scraping them a little more and putting some more musk on them. And we'll talk to you about ground scrapes in a minute. But he'll do that about once every 24, sometimes as long as 48 hours. As long as it isn't unseasonably warm or stormy or very windy or it knows a bow hunter is very near one of his ground scrapes or antler rubs. There's an exception I need to talk about right about here. Uh, Whitetail started invading farm areas back in the middle 1900s. And when they did that, they had to make quite a few adaptations to living in such areas because a suitable whitetail habitat might be very limited, uh, mainly wooded areas. And, uh, Bucks being creatures of forest areas, they kind of make use of most wooded areas, the little bit that might be available. And uh, in those areas, uh, bedding areas of bucks and even adjacent feeding areas, places like that, but bucks will be concentrated in the few wooded areas that are remaining. And that's where the antler rubs are made in wooded areas or brushy areas. Uh, and uh, it's not uncommon today uh, where whitetail numbers are great in farm regions to see more than one buck uh, renewing the same scrape or same antler rub. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you're hunting in such an area, hunting a ground scrape for example, uh, you might see young bucks come along, maybe even a yearling, <laughs> and deposit tarsal musk on the scrape. A little while later here comes a two and a half year old that does the same thing. And so in that case, the, the buck you see renewing a scrape or rub at, in a farm region is not the dominant breeding buck. So if the younger bucks are coming, don't consider that to be the biggest buck. Uh, the biggest one is yet to come. So keep that in mind. Now, most of these signs are made at, at uh, traditional spots made by many generations of dominant breeding bucks over many years, decades even. I, I think some ground scrapes I know of, or, or sites that I know of, have been in use by dominant bucks for maybe a hundred years. And the reason they're there is because they're at a spot where they're sure to be discovered by other bucks that have been run out of the dominant bucks breeding range. So they tend to be at traditional sites. And now let's talk about the ground scrapes now. Uh, yearling bucks will make ground scrapes, but usually they're small, only about a foot in diameter. 
and they usually make them next to a small diameter tree, you know, three quarters to an inch in diameter, right next to it. And so they'll be, uh, the two signs will go together, but just a little small one. And usually they only make about six of each uh, during the fall. And they're generally located in um, close to where uh, they and their mother's bed or where their mother's feed, they and their mother's feed, they're, they're together quite a bit, even in fall, although at that time they're starting to explore more and more off-range like most bucks do. But anyway, you don't find a lot of those, but they're, they're typically just little round scrapes uh, next to a little tree, a inch, less than an inch in diameter. And right away, anytime you find, it, find one of those, that's, that's the ground scrape and that's the antler of a yearling buck. Now, older bucks, bucks two and a half years in age or older, all have their own individual home ranges, and they overlap, like I said, with those of other bucks. Their ground scrapes tend to be larger, especially if if the other if the lesser buck is a five and a half, six and a half, or even a, uh, the rare seven and a half year old buck. Those are really big bucks, and they just happen to live in a range where there's one a little bit bigger and tougher and more aggressive than they are. And their ground scrapes can be quite large, anywhere from two to three feet in diameter. Uh, my boys and I have discovered and photographed ground scrapes as big as ten feet in diameter, that's pretty rare, and ten feet long and three feet wide, those are kind of rare too. But Anything that's up there in the three foot in diameter range is made by a pretty good sized buck. Now, you know, when you get to late into this phase of the rut, which ends in early November, the breeding begins in Minnesota on November 3rd. That's a big date here. It might be a little bit later where you live if you're in a, living in a state more south of Minnesota. But anyway, by the time we get closer to breeding, the, some of those smaller scrapes can be, get to be quite large. So when a big dominant buck makes one in the beginning, it might be small, but by then uh, they're getting to be quite large, three feet in diameter. Sometimes you'll see two. Sometimes you'll see two close to one another, both really large ones. Amongst all these larger scrapes, you're going to find some that just don't look like they've been renewed lately. There's leaves laying on them and the ground looks dry. Those scrapes are, have, were made by these other lesser bucks that got chased off and so they haven't had a chance to renew those. But the big dominant buck, boy, he'll keep, keep his fresh looking and, fresh, and he'll have fresh deposits of musk on him uh, 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 every 24 to 48 hours, so they're always looking fresh. So the really fresh ones you see uh, late uh, in October and the first days of of, uh, of, Dece of November are only made by the big dominant buck of your hunting area, which by the way is the biggest one in your hunting area. It probably has the largest antlers as well, almost definitely. The one you really dream about taking. Well anyway, uh, uh, this process goes on until breeding begins. One of the other characteristics of a big buck or dominant buck's ground scrape is busted or broken overhanging branches. You know, each time a dominant buck makes a ground scrape, he'll uh, usually make it underneath overhanging branches or boughs of evergreen trees that hang out over the scrape. And uh, not always, but often. And, uh, and then before leaving that scrape, after they've renewed it, they'll, he'll rub some of that scalp scent on, on an overhanging bough. Breeding bucks, well, they were doing that, were rubbing the sides of their faces on those branches overhanging the ground scrape. And some of them will uh, sh just make shambles of those overhanging branches with their antlers, just bust them up. And I don't know if it's delivered to make branches fall on the, on the scrape or not, uh, adding scalp musk. To the, to the other musk that's placed in the scrape. This is the end of part two of phase two of the whitetail rut. Uh, don't miss part three, you're going to enjoy it.